away. Thanks, Rohan. Cool. So um, it was great to hear Bonnie uh, talk about big data and you know the big data initiatives that are going on in Spark. And it was also great to hear her talk about productivity. So uh, the talk that I'm going to be introducing to you today is really all about big data and it's all about improving productivity. Um, and so what it is, it's a, a tool that takes data from any data source and through a, a GUI interface that loads it into, uh, into Hadoop. Has anyone here not heard um, about Hadoop? So we all know what Hadoop is, we're all sort of familiar with big data. That's great, I don't need to go into it. Um, look, just what I've got in, in store for you today is, is a little bit of theory. So I'm going to be doing about sort of seven or eight minutes of theory, just to sort of get you in a space that I can then uh, do a presentation uh, around the software. And so I'm going to demonstrate the software, and the way that I've done that is to sit back in my office and actually uh, capture the screen for you, rather than um, do it here live, just with network. Uh, problems and, and things like that, but I'll actually get to see the software working uh, and so you can start to see how, how data flow for Hadoop works and we'll have a look at the Hadoop side as well. So we've got a lot to, to cover, um, so I'll jump straight in. Uh, 15 minutes, it's not a lot of time uh, to present a completely new product and we think it's a very exciting product, especially if you're considering big data initiatives. So uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm a big data architect at SAS and so what I like to do is Start off with the modern analytics architecture and how we see that at SAS. So what we're looking at is uh, the new conceptualization of uh, the an, you know, analytics lab or an innovation hub, however you want to talk about it. And we see it as being the sort of next step in terms of enabling your uh, analytics practice. And so on the on the right hand side of your screen you've got the enterprise data warehouse and so that's traditionally been your data source that you've worked against um, and it contains you know, it's highly governed data, highly structured data uh, and it's been reliable, uh, it's been fantastic in actual fact as a single point of truth um, over the years. On the, on the left hand side though we've got the analytics lab and so this is the new area uh, that consists of the data lake and the, the analytics lab is where we bring in a lot of our unstructured data. Uh, we bring in data that's arriving at the business at high speed, so it's got high velocity. And we're also, that's going to be where we bring all of our data together. So it's going to be the single point um, of collection uh, that we call the data lab uh, for all of our data in the enterprise. And this is kind of the new architecture that we're presenting to the market uh, and that we see working. Uh, and it's certainly, certainly the architecture that I think, if you're not, you know, working with today, uh, that you will be, uh, you will be in the in the near or, or medium term future. So just getting underneath the hood, then, uh, let's have a look a little bit at the data lane. And so what we see is that there's sort of a semi-conformed area. Uh, there's an unmodeled and unstructured area, and uh, where that red arrow is there on the on the slide, that's what uh, my talk about today is going to be. So it's going to be getting uh, data into the data lake, okay? And uh, the, the reason that I'm talking about it, and I think the product is so exciting, is because people, you know, implement a big data appliance, such as to do, and then the first problem they've got is actually collecting all of the data in, in the enterprise, or all the necessary data for the use case in question, and bringing that into the do. And, uh, that's not an easy task. You know, um, the, the data loader for Hadoop makes it easy for you and it really makes, uh, gives you the ability to act in an agile way. So you don't need to be a coder. Um, in fact, any business analyst can do it. Look, just to complete the architecture for you, I'll bring up uh, the other side of the slide. And this is, this is a slide you'll probably see again in the future, just as we go around and we talk about the new analytics architecture to you. Uh, and we assist you, you know, in your big data, in your big data um, initiatives. So there it is, uh, back, you know, in plain text. Just wanted to lift the covers there for you a little bit, show you a little bit what was underneath the hood, and sort of prepare you just in an architecture term for what was uh, an architecture terms for what was coming. 
uh, and then start to talk about some of the challenges that we're seeing as customers start to implement data lakes or implement Hadoop, uh, and you know how data loaded by Hadoop can really help you out with some of those challenges. So if we look at the top hurdles uh, that people are facing, there's kind of three main challenges uh, that we see in the marketplace, okay? And so the first one is, is data quality. And so data quality's always been a challenge. Um, what happens when you bring it into the data lake or bring it into a big data appliance is that data quality problems uh, get magnified. So you integrate data, and in, to, and in, in so doing, any, any problems that you've got in the various sources get multiplied when they're uh, uh, aligned alongside each other. And so data quality becomes a real problem. And so, you know, it's probably going to be no surprise to you um, when, I, when I point out that data loaded by Hadoop has got some great data quality uh, functionality. Um, and I did want to bring that up as, as kind of one of the main challenges. The second main challenge that we're seeing is around integrating data sources. And so it's all been good and well in the enterprise data warehouse world where, we've, where things are related by keys, you know, primary keys, foreign keys, uh, and relationships, and it's pretty easy to integrate that data. When we're looking at um, data that's not key, in particular unstructured data, bringing that data together for analysis uh, might not be the easiest thing. And so the second major challenge that you're going to face when implementing a big data appliance, particularly with unstructured data, but also streaming data, is going to be integrating that data and to be able to produce you know, meaningful insights from the data. And so, you know, again, it should come as no surprise to you that data loaded by the do um, gives you the ability to, to integrate data, also non-key data. And so the third, the third uh, challenge that we're seeing in the marketplace is just finding people uh, in order to be able to, to manage the big data appliance and really uh, we're seeing a skills gap in the market. All these technologies are new, um, people are buying for, and the technologies, ch technologies change all the time, people are buying for, for skills and so there is a skills gap in the market. If we look at getting data into Hadoop, you know, you're going to be using tools like perhaps Flume and Scoop, and they, uh, what they've got is they've got a, you know, highly specific programming models underneath the hood. Um, data loaded for Hadoop will, uh, will actually abstract you away from that, that um, need to program. It'll actually is a code generator for those tools itself, and so, uh, you know, you've got huge advantages in terms of, of bridging the skills gap. So there are three big challenges. And uh, just in terms of meeting that challenge, let me introduce you to uh, SAS Data Loader for Hadoop. So there's sort of the SAS Data Loader for Hadoop is a web app, and it contains uh, about five different sort of key functions. Uh, and these, under each of these functions, are a number of different tasks. Now, just to get you used to the language, the tasks themselves are actually called directives, okay? So when I speak of a directive, I'm actually speaking of getting work done. Um, and some of those uh, directives, uh, for instance, you know, uh, querying, uh, bringing data into the do, uh, you know, transposing the data and transforming it, right through to data quality routines, such as standardizing the data and uh, validating the data. And then, you know, in terms of integrating the data, there's a number of different functions as well creating match codes, which is really good if you don't have those keys uh, available. And then, you know, in terms of delivering data, it's really easy to, to extract the data out of Hadoop, um, perhaps from a batch analysis, and bring that into, say, a laser server uh, or a visual analytics environment. Uh, so there's a number of, of uh, directives there as well. And so in my demo today, uh, I'm going to be just showing you three directives or three functions, three tasks, and they're going to be, what we're going to do is we're going to copy some data into Hadoop. We're going to go and just validate, make sure that data's there, and then we're going to join some data in Hadoop. Um, so we're going to run some, some high queries directly from Data Loader, and then we're going to deliver the data, so we're going to actually uh, extract some data out of Hadoop. Okay? 
And so it's just a little, we're going to show you the full round trip uh, in terms of the, in terms of data processing and how uh, data like Hadoop works. I uh, hope you're as excited about it as I am, and I'm just, the data, the, uh, the demo gods being with me, let's just, let's just fire ahead, and just in a few minutes, what we're going to do is we're actually going to load data into Hadoop and, um, and extract it again. So what we're looking at now is uh, the interface, and we can see the directives there in the data loader for Hadoop. And we're going to choose the copy data to the Hadoop director. So we'll go in, we'll choose you know, data location for a data set. I'm going to choose a customer data set. And we're just going to click our way through, choosing all columns, uh, all rows. And then we're going to choose a target table. And we're going to call this one the Sun's customer table. So there we go. Just uh, hit the next button. You can see it's all a pretty easy to use wizard interface. We'll start copying the data. And so what's going on now is underneath the hood, a PropSQL uh, statement was run. And so that PropSQL has been trans transformed into Hivecode. And so it's that Hivecode is now running in Hadoop and that data is getting uh, loaded into Hadoop. All wizard uh, driven, so you can see how easy it is to use. That's run successfully. So what we'll do is we'll now take a second table. We'll do two tables and join up there. So we'll go and choose the good old orders table this time. Similar sort of process. So we've got a number of wizard steps. Let's create a sun's order table. Here we go, a quick look at the SAS code, good old prop SQL, start copying the data. And so in this case the SAS access library is, uh, is being used again. Uh, it's been accessed directly with uh, the Hive service in Hadoop. And so again Hive code is being run underneath the hood. And so the great thing is you get the Hive uh, metadata integration as well. And so what we'll do is we'll go and we'll actually have a look at that, that metadata integration when we go into Hadoop and just confirm that the tables are being loaded. So here we are, we're in the new uh, browser. So this is the way that we look at, at Hadoop. And we can see, yep, there's our son's customer and our son's order table. Fantastic. It's been loaded successfully. So we'll go back now. And now we'll actually join those tables in Hadoop, okay? So a little bit of a, a different dialogue here. We'll just choose the base table, the customer table. It automatically will pick up if there's some columns that are named the same. And again, we're just clicking our way through, uh, through the dialogue. Choose the target table for the join. Uh, data, so I guess Sun's uh, customer order is probably going to be a good table name. Yep, there we go. So this time we've got pure pure hive code that's been generated, and this is the way that uh, the data loader works. It tends to uh, tends to generate the best code for the task, and so that can be uh, a number of the uh, um, service of codes, so it can be uh, it can use uh, Flume, um, it can use Scoop, it can use Hive, it can use Pig, it can use any number of different services underneath the hood. So we'll start, uh, we've we'll joined that data. Right, let's go into the do and just make sure that we've got a join table there. And actually we might want to have a look at the Hive metadata as well this time around. <coughs> So these are our customer order tables being generated within within Hadoop. Jason's just sent me an email I see there. Um, so let's go and view that table. And then we can see the metadata has been brought over from SAS into Hadoop. Just go and make sure that the data has been joined as we've expected. Yeah. So we've got the customer and order table. Um, all customer orders now available to us. 
And so let's go and copy the data back out. So it's just showing you how you can go in and, and if you've got batch processes like MapReduce jobs running, you can actually retrieve that data. So we can specify the number of Hadoop uh, processes to run. Uh, let's just create a new, a new SAS data set there. Or same, same customer order. And so this is really taking you through the full round trip. So we'll start copying that data out. And we've even got a little results viewer so we can go and have a look at the SAS data set and the data later. And so you can see there's some, uh, some pretty compelling functionality there. Uh, in the space of just five or so minutes, what we've done is we've actually you know, taken some data into the do. Uh, we have joined that data and then we've extracted some data back out of the loop. So they're very common tasks uh, when working with big data. So you know, I hope you're uh, just as excited, excited about the possibilities as I am. <coughs> so what are the benefits of all this? Well, we can, uh, we can integrate uh, disparate data, so that's the first one. Uh, the second one is we've uh, got data quality routines uh, for Hadoop, so we can actually run data quality against our big data. And the third, you know, really major benefit is you've seen that I've written no code and I've gotten data into Hadoop, done some manipulation and got it back out, so we've got some no code uh, productivity uh, going on there, and you can see how, how fast it is as well. So uh, they're pretty exciting, exciting benefits. If you want to learn more about uh, Hadoop, uh, the data loader for Hadoop, and how SAS supports it, well, we've got a free 90-day trial. There we go. So there's the URL if you want to uh, just note that down. And what this does is it actually downloads you a virtual machine. Um, when you run that virtual machine, you get an IP address, and you just connect the browser to the IP address, and you're away and running. Okay. So uh, gives you uh, a full three months of playing around with the tool and uh, you'll get uh, to speed really quickly with that. Uh, if you want some more direction, we do have a free hands-on workshop on, on the data loader for Hadoop. So there's the URL for that, and if you're not familiar with the hands-on workshops, now's a good uh, chance to go in and just have a look at those uh, hands-on workshops. So it's an hour and a half of hands-on, and uh, you know, we have them on a number of different topics. Um, we also have them on the, the uh, data load that we do, and I believe there's another one coming up uh, pretty smartly, so you might want to enrol for that as well. So that's it, uh, loading data into Hadoop, exploring it and getting it back out all in, in 15 minutes. I uh, hope you found that really useful. Look, if you've got any questions, I see we're coming right up to break time, so I'll be around during the break and just feel free to, to approach me there. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed uh, the demo just as much as I enjoyed putting it together and I'll get talk to you in the break, thank you.